First of all, I would like to welcome all of you to the University of Wolverhampton in a different like shape, different place. We are online and I like to think that is like a spread University of Wolverhampton, not just in Wolverhampton, Black Country, UK, but I would tell you that uh, we are joining this lecture for 14 countries around the world. And this makes us proud because uh, we, are, we are doing it. Uh, very well because we are providing uh, this kind of uh, sp the, we are spreading architecture because around the world, not just only in this area. Uh, welcome. Just quick, uh, a few quick tips before starting the lecture. Uh, as you know, all of you could uh, talk with the microphone and asking question, but if we start asking question, it's going to be like. Uh, a, a very noisy conference. So my suggestion, if you wanna, if you wanna ask a question, just type in the chat the question. I will take note on this, and at the very end, I will leave you uh, the opportunity to ask directly to Josh uh, or me. I don't know. It's, I think it's Josh. I just introduced in the lecture um, uh, this question. Uh, so you can silence your microphone. Uh, just click on top of your name, and then you will have the opportunity to, to silence your microphone, which I think is best thing and just turn it on only when you need it. If the signal is not the best one, we know that there's a lot of problem with VAG media uh, this morning and as the, yeah, the network yeah. is overloaded, uh, uh, maybe, Paul, could you please? Okay, great, Paul, thanks. Um, uh, maybe if you like, well, you don't need to have the, the camera, but just to save uh, the band, just turn off the microphone, the camera, if you have the camera. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, uh, all of you, the University of Wolverhampton, uh, uh, RIBA West Midland to support uh, this lecture. We are talking to publish this lecture online, so it could be available for everyone who is interested in architecture in this country and, and overseas. And, um, this is the second lecture of the very short series, as I told uh, in the previous introduction. Uh, when we start thinking, oh, we have been like pushing to move everything online, I said, I was thinking, okay, this is not like a proper like uh, smart uh, teaching, smart working, because we are moving online, the same things that we are doing uh, day by day at the university face to face. Yeah. And I, hello? Hello? Hello. So, hello. hello. Could you hear us? Hello. Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Could you please turn off your microphone uh, and then turn it on only when you need it? So, oh, and I was thinking, oh, fine, fine. And I was thinking, what we can do? What we? How we can use uh, this lockdown? This moving online in the best way? How we can push our teaching, our spending of culture? And the idea was. Okay, let's try to share a few lectures. It was an idea very, uh, very quick. The, the, I, I had very quickly, and then I started thinking about this like two weeks ago. I think the weeks before Easter is three weeks ago. And I'm happy that 57 people now, 14 countries, uh, it's have its own uh, result. Uh, next year, maybe we'll, we'll do this in, in a very like more uh, organized way once a month, maybe. Uh, because uh, we do believe that Wolverhampton could become like provider of inspiration, provider of creativity, uh, a think tank for architecture in the area. But uh, let me stop here and just introduce a bit Josh. Uh, Josh is a student, is a blogger, and is a Wolverhampton guy. Uh, we met the first times at the uh, meeting of the Wolverhampton District Society of Architects, which is the local branch of IBA. And for me, this was like a good opportunity. I always said I'm a RBA member, ARB, uh, I'm architect even in Italy, and I'm an academic. And I always said these are two worlds, the academy and the professional, that needs to work together. Uh, because it's not that we teach something and then the professional do things. And the opportunity to join the society and to push uh, architecture could even through a professional side, for me, it was important. When we start like uh, talking about 
possible development at this of the local society. I will start talking with Josh, and Josh told me about this website. Uh, what I really like in in Josh is like the 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 will to share things. Uh, I think he will tell you about a little bit more about the website. But I think that a student uh, could share with other students his own experience, his own way of doing things is the more important things. Uh, we could be a, a wider community if you are able to share. In this uh, approach to sharing, I think the social media uh, will have a very important role because let us uh, the opportunity to share all around the world in a very easily way on platform or tools it depends uh, that for us are very easy to use. But now I don't want to uh, talk more and I leave the virtual stage to Josh. Uh, Josh, thank you. Maybe I, 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 I said thank you to everyone, to the attendance, to the right way, and I was forgetting the most important. Thank you, Josh, for, for giving us the opportunity to have this lecture and have this dialogue. And now the stage is yours. Thank you very much, Luigi. Very, very kind of you. Uh, lovely introduction. Uh, now, my, I'm I'm Josh. Uh, I'm like I, like Luigi says. I'm a I'm a part two architectural assistant. I'm I'm based here in Wolverhampton. Um, I have been all my life. I studied at De Montfort University in Leicester for both my undergraduate and postgraduate degrees, uh, and I now work at a local practice in Wolverhampton called Lewis Architecture. Um, but that's not that's not why I'm here today. Why, why I'm here today is to talk about architecture in the age of social media, um, and that's because I started three, three, four years ago now, which seems like a lifetime away. Um, a little blog. It was called the Architecture Student Blog. Um, now, forgive me. There might be some slight technical issues because I've got a Mac and everything's office based for this present uh, for the upload of this presentation. So. Some of these videos might end up just being still images, but as you can see there, the, the architecture student blog grew into something bigger than I ever expected it to be. Uh, it's become a community of students, professionals, anyone and everyone really that's interested in architecture. Um, we've now got a following of over, I think that's slightly outdated. I think we're up to about 74,000 followers now on Instagram, 700 subscribers on YouTube and, I mean, really, all, all I wanted to do with my blog was to provide a platform for students to share their work and actually get it outside the studio. It started four years ago. I'd just finished the final year of my undergraduate degree. I'd spent eight years and eight months of my life working relentlessly on this one project to realize that actually you get your final pin up, which is about a 10 minute presentation, and then perhaps a few conversations at the degree show at the end of the year. And it goes into a portfolio ready for interviews. And I mean, for me, I was luckily and fortunate enough that I had a job. So literally it went into the portfolio and it hasn't come out since. So I thought, why not start something, try and build a community of people to actually allow them to give them a platform really to showcase their work. And, and just put it out to the masses. Never did I expect the masses to be 70 odd thousand people from around the world, from you know America to India to Singapore. I mean, the, the people that we, we've managed to share has been incredible, really. Um, let me just, we've also got a website, um, which again, just added on to that platform because I wanted to give students the opportunity to explain why they've done things, the reasons behind their project, and just just give people an opportunity. I think there's such a, a breadth of students around the world that want to share their work. Um, and why not why not give them the opportunity to do that? And it's become become what it has. It's allowed me to have discussions with people that I never thought I would. I hope that'll keep continuing to grow. I've spoken to RRBA precedence medal winners. I've spoken to people that work at Arc Daily. We've now been featured on Arc Daily, which is obviously one of the biggest architecture platforms for journalism globally. So, yeah, that's that's a little bit about me. I don't want to talk too much about myself, but yeah, if you you know you can just search us on Google and you'll be able to find us. And if there's any students around there that want to send me a message or would like to have their work featured, then 
you know, by all means, just drop drop the page a message and say that you, you were listening to the lecture and just start a discussion. That's the whole reason why I started the page and, and what I want to continue continue doing with it. So Luigi's obviously asked me here today to talk about architecture in the age of social media. Granted, given my experience, I'd, you know, I'd like to think I've got a few stories that I could tell. And, and the way I see this lecture going is sort of in two halves. It will be the first half taking a bit of a holistic view of generally the, the impact that social media has had on architecture over the, the, you know, the last 10, 15 years. And then the second half will be a bit more Q&A style, me giving you advice on what you can do to, to brand yourself, to use social media, to, to really publish yourself and, and, and get yourself out there whether you're a student or obviously aiming it more towards the student but with 60 people in the room I'd imagine there might be some people in practice and, and just looking at how you can brand yourself to get a, you know improved job prospects or even just moving towards you know I, I'm I like to think of myself as a as a bit of a social media the social media guy in my practice you know why not add that string to your bow and take that take that to the practice that you work at so right let's move let's move on so i wanted to start with the benefits i think obviously the the, the social social media is a very very sort of argumentative topic generally let alone um within the world of architecture i think in the 21st century we're hyper connected now i mean nobody's nobody's leaving leaving home without one of these are they so we we, we can't really get away from the fact that it, it, it's having an influence um and, and I think it, as much as people probably might not think architecture is quite as impacted as some other areas of the world, I think hopefully by the end of today's lecture, you, it might open your mind a little bit to at just that what social media is doing within our field. Um, and it's not just a, a marketing tool. I think it is drastically affecting the way that we as people both design and, and use spaces. I think it's a, a really interesting topic to discuss and to go through today because um, I do I do think that it's having a massive impact on on the way we interact with spaces I think tourism obviously is a massive element but nowadays you're finding people going on holiday who want to get the perfect photo to post on their social media to post on you know Instagram Facebook whatever it is that they're using uh, and I think it's actually given giving people control um, and more sort of ownership over architecture. You know, I think people really are taking pride in in visiting various different spaces and wanting to, to take that little bit of ownership and their their take on the architecture through their ability to, to share what they've found and what they've done through social media. Um, obviously, in in in, to, in the current climate that we find ourselves in, I think it's difficult for us to argue that technology isn't having a massive impact on the way that we're doing things. Because I'm very very fortunate that I'm able to give a lecture today to 60 people, as Luigi said, from around the world, from the comfort of my own home, and 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 talk to you and and just spread a bit of knowledge and start a discussion. So I think obviously a lot of what I say today is focused towards. You know, before this, we're trying to suggest solely so 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 you know, I think it's likewise for students. I think the platforms like myself, obviously, I can, I'm only talking from my own experience. You know, stu students nowadays have such a breadth of library to get inspiration from, you know, find out more information. Pages like my own, which they're not the only one. There, there is so much information being shared out there of other student projects that you can look at for inspiration that you can sort of take take little snippets from and, and, and develop your own ideas. I think we, as much as I think it's a very split debate on social media, and I'm by no means suggesting there aren't any negatives, you know, I think it does offer us a great, a great deal of, of information and a lot of, a lot of benefits. 
And I think moving on to the next one, we have got to accept its influence. I mean, I've just taken this, you know, four examples there of, you know, the, the top architects or, or some of at least the top architects around the world. Um, you know, just looking at, I mean, B Bjark Ingels really for me is probably one of the most pronounced, pronounced for being on social media as himself. I mean, look at that selfie with that moustache there. I mean, he's clearly clearly enjoying this, the, the life of social media. But again, he's got over 750,000, you know, 750,000 followers on Instagram. Norman Foster, again, he, I know he likes to share some things of being at the office, you know, with a half a million. And obviously, Zaha Hadid Architects, um, with over a million, I mean, they're they're more towards the business and practice side of things. I will admit, although you know, Zaha Hadid, before she did pass, did obviously share quite a lot of her own her own influences. Um, I think it's difficult to to argue that social media isn't having an influence. And I think if we were having this discussion two to three years ago, I think there very would much be a generational debate. You know, you'd have a lot of the younger people in the audience saying, of course, it's having a massive impact and the older generation potentially saying, I don't think so. But I mean, 20%, I've just got some stats that, you know, 20% of Instagram users are between the age of 35 and 55. And I mean, Facebook even more so, the average age is 40 years old. So I think, you know, as we move towards, you know, the, in, into 2020 i think the fact that social media is without a doubt having a, a massive influence and, and likewise it is in the world of architecture as well i think as as more people are becoming as, as social accepting social media as the norm you know a lot of practices which let's admit if we're going with stereotypes there are they do tend to be a, a, an older swathe of architects just because of the, the length of time it takes to qualify and, and become a sort of higher up within practices it probably has been a slower infiltration but there is without a doubt no way that you could argue that it's not having a massive impact on on what what we do and, and speaking from experience and just so happens today in the practice that i work at from a facebook post we've had a new inquiry come through from a new client just this morning so i'm speaking from experience to say that it does work um i mean so much to say that a few years ago, OMA, they actually changed their website to show only photographs that other people took, geotagged on Instagram to showcase their own work. Um, the partner, Ippolito Laparelli, said that he felt when the amateur pictures told a completely different story to their architecture. And I'll, I'll come on to that a little bit later on, but that sort of keys into the fact and what I'm talking about when I say we're giving social media gives people more ownership over architecture because they can put their own flair on it and actually from from the research that's been done a lot of architects are using social media for their post occupation studies and they're finding that through the likes of instagram and don't me wrong i'm talking much much bigger scale social projects but actually a lot of the a lot of the research that they're doing using geotags on the likes of Facebook, Instagram and hashtags to find their own buildings, they're actually finding that people are using the spaces in completely different ways than they ever thought that they would. And, and I think there's something quite nice about that, actually. I mean, in a world where quite a few people are damning of social media and technology and our connection to it, to actually be able to see the benefits from it and utilise it as a way to change the thinking and and really learn from people through social media it, it, it does make a big difference in the in the way that we not only design spaces but how how we see that spaces are being interpreted and i think it does it does offer us a lesson because at the end of the day we're a bit like today you're only going to learn from other people and if i design something that was being used in a completely different way than what i intended that's a lesson to be learned and, and something to take with me onto the next project. Um, so, and I think that lead, that then sort of leads me on to the next the next point really um, of Instagrammable architecture, and that's that's a phrase I've sort of coined myself a little bit. Um, but it, it's it's the easiest way for me to describe 
how social media is actually indefinitely affecting the way the architects design i think particularly obviously i'm talking at the larger sort of civic and, and social and urban design aspects like like this project here the cloud gate in chicago i mean this is a, a social media hotspot really in america and, and i think it's just one example of where architecture is heading and i think i've got another example on the next slide which i'm sure everybody will be aware of which was actually conspired for the sole reason of social media and you know this interaction between tourism and social media and, and, the, and the idea that through a, can, how can social media be utilized to actually bring people into our architecture and, and give them that sense of ownership and, and create a real interaction i mean in its simplest form let's be honest that as beautiful as it is it's a giant mirrored jelly bean isn't it it's actually then what people do with that and the way that it's shared and the way that people take their own artistic influences on it that actually make it something special um let's click on to the next slide and here's another one i mean more recent i love this project personally um this is the vessel by thomas heatherwick which is in hudson's yard in new york now this is a 200 million dollar so this is a very expensive it's a it's a piece of architectural sculpture it's a, a series of staircases that ultimately offer a view of the city but lead nowhere there is no formal use for it as such um, but the developer is a obviously a, a big developer over in the us a, a real estate developer stephen ross he said he wanted to create something iconic that would become a tourist magnet and i don't think even he would have expected it to be as sort of popular as it has been i think just from the little bit of research that i've done just on instagram alone the hashtag the vessel or the vessel hudson's yards however you want to coin it has got about two hundred thousand posts and that is literally just through a hashtag so it, it again they really are the, the way that we're designing is changing because people are you know people are sharing people are experiencing it in their own way and, and it really does be foolish of us to to try and argue that it, it isn't affecting the way that we design i certainly know the way that i design you know i think about what you know doing 3d models doing certain renders and trying to do things that are going to give people the wow factor because if we were to share that then more people are going to be interacting with it and it's a snowball effect because actually and what i found with the blog is you know start with one person one person might share that to their 200 odd followers and then that slowly snowball effects and i had gone from you know the first 50 that took a few months to get to seventy thousand in three years i mean it's it, it it's the way that it's the way of the world now really it we're in a very in a world of great communication which is fantastic and it's actually a, a case of how the architecture now is becoming a lot more shareable and 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 being designed so that it's more shareable bringing people into a piece of architecture actually then allowing them to take ownership of it and, and share it with their friends their family their followers you know what i mean if you go on if you just put hashtag architectural photography there's millions of posts that i'm sure you can keep yourself occupied with for weeks upon weeks because actually and, and there's something really nice about it because you just see you know buildings in a completely different way to that you've ever seen them before and and that's what and that's what i'm trying to put through today really is actually it's making a big difference subconsciously or consciously however you want to see it. it it is making a massive difference and i'm not i'm by no means saying that you've got to design something because it's good on instagram or whatever but i think it you know subconsciously entwined into our thinking especially for for younger people i mean i'm i'm 25 i'm sure some of the students here are well aware of the works that are going on across the country across the globe and actually because of social media they're becoming more attuned and aware of, of what's going on in the world and, and i can only see that really being being a massive benefit um so and to the point where obviously the likes of the just the two examples that i've given there are actually affecting the work that is even being commissioned from you know day zero 
not even to the point of getting to a design and then thinking about sharing it. These designs are actually being brought into fruition for the sole purpose of, you know, tourism, yes, is one, but also how can we bring people together and make them want to, to share their experience with it? Um, now, of course, with that, you know, we are, we are moving on to, an, you know, an element of a downside. And this is just one example that I found from Dezine. You've got, a, I mean, it's a nice, it's a very polite comment there, actually. You know, wonderful glowing effect shingles, very popular in Northern American markets and puzzling while they're less so in the UK. It's a wonderful material for design. And I mean, that's a, that's a lovely comment and a great bit of feedback. You know, it's a, it's a great, as an architect, if it was my project, I'd be, I'd be happy to receive a comment like that. And, you know, it does make you think, you know, okay, maybe we need to be using this material more in the UK because we can, we can get ahead of the trend and we can offer something, something different. Now, obviously there's going to be downsides to that. And as there always is, I think when you, when, when you first saw this slide, I think everyone might have instantly gone to the the troll and the hatred side of social media, which, you know, I'm, I'm not disputing. There is, there is that element of it. There's, and unfortunately that's just the way, the way that life is. And you have got to be a little bit thick, thick skinned when it comes to things like that. But the comments like this one are actually really beneficial. And I think it's, you know, the reason why I've put the ultimate critique is actually, I think on social media, people are so unfiltered, you know, people don't really think about what they're talking. You're going to get a very honest and raw reaction, which can obviously tilt on either side of the scale. You'll get a lovely comment like that, where it's really well thought out, or you could get quite a, quite a scathing comment. But I think from an architectural point of view, in terms of us in designing and, and post occupancy, I think it's really important and a really useful tool that we can use. You know, I think, if we can get people and encourage people to provide their thoughts and comments on certain designs, why they've done certain things and, and what their thoughts are on it, I think it actually, the feedback we get from that, you know, if I go back to, to sort of school, you know, you're having a crit every few months, maybe you're having weekly tutorials where you're getting feedback. And yet when you move into practice, as much, you get you are getting that feedback because of course the client's going to tell you very clearly their opinions and what they want but you're not getting a broader spectrum and you're not really getting that wider wider feedback and, and comments so i think that's what social media is bringing to architecture that potentially people aren't utilizing or realizing is actually we should be using social media to sound out ideas you know what why wait until post completion why not post out a concept design that you haven't even got a client for yet, but you're thinking of something along those lines. Why not post it out and get other people's opinions and, and actually use social media for what it was originally intended to be, which was a forum for discussion, for sharing, for communication. I think, you know, we've got to be aware that we are going down a bit of a wormhole in the fact that people feel like they can only share their actually, you know, their top, top quality work and, and what have you, but actually it's the complete opposite, you know, share the rough, share the developmental side of things and people actually all love to see the journey from here's the sketch that we posted three months ago and Steve from wherever said he thought we should do something like this we followed that idea and now we're here and and, and actually see that see the progress and see how how things can develop and I implore students to do exactly the same I, I found it in my own experience you know I I set up an Instagram profile for my student um, work and it was great because I was getting feedback from other people, people asking me how I did certain things. And when you've got to explain your own thoughts to somebody else, it develops your own understanding of why you've done things and come, come to your final crit day, your final presentation. You know, you're going in there, you're confident because you've already had some of these discussions with other people. Um, and I think it's like anything, nobody's going to, you know, you've got to take the feedback with a pinch of salt, but it's always going to give you some form of benefit, whether it's good or bad. You know, sometimes you've got to take it on the chin, but I think it's always going to be of a, a benefit and, and it's the, the way to go. And that obviously leads me on to how architectural communication is changing. So, you know, I'll admit this is, this is sort of more ed edging towards the... Um, the technical side, I'll admit, and, and the technology element of it. But again, I think that does come back around to, to, you know, certain elements of social media, the shareability of work that we do and why, you know, what, 
the end of the day, you're going to struggle to share an A1 hand-drawn, you know, beautiful drawing without some difficulty. So I think when we're looking at, I mean, I've just picked a, an example here that I'm sure everyone is aware of or has seen before, just some rhino and grasshopper coding that's being done to create these sort of incredible organic designs. Um, and, and I think that's that's partly influenced and by the way that commun communication is obviously definitely changing. You know, the way we speak, the way that we share our ideas is changing. I don't think I talked about a, a you know a sort of a physical portfolio, but let's face it, nowadays most students have got their own websites, or you know, I, I use social media as my own little little portfolio because it's just a lot easier for everybody to access, and it's uh, it's definitely a lot more sustainable. And and I think it sort of comes down to and again talking about modelling and, and certain elements. You know, I think when we look at three D printing and you know VR and and the, the, just the complete way that the, the way that architectural architecture over the last few years is really developing and becoming its own its own entity. You know we we're at, you've got actual people now there that solely specialise in VR, three um, D visualisation like Antonio from last week's lecture. I mean some of his work was fantastic and that he's that's what he loves to do and that's where that's where he's decided to go go with his work and and that's that's the way things are changing now we're actually seeing the other side of architecture that potentially previously we, we weren't seeing of course i don't think social media is solely responsible for all of this of course not it's the, the wider umbrella of technology but i think it'd be foolish to suggest that social media hasn't had an element of influence because i think as i mentioned before just that shareability why, why create as beautiful as they are, and I'll admit they were the bane of my life at architecture school. Why well, create a, a very minute one to a hundred model, physical model, and and I can see the benefits of it of getting the idea down and, and what have you. When you can create a three dimensional one to one model that you can walk through, you can go to every single, you know, screw, piece of cladding, you know, floor finish, everything. We we can design to such a finite detail now because of technology. I think we are and, are, and continue, will continue to see a transition from the more traditional, should I say, to to the to the more technological. And I think, as as I'll come on to in my next couple of slides, I think that is drastically affecting the work that we produce as well. I think that, especially in the student side of things, obviously. Again, I can't talk about architecture globally, but from my experience of what I see from a day, I mean, I'll keep my ear to the ground when it comes to student work with the blog. I'm, I'm looking at things on, on a daily basis to be reposting and sharing and, and getting the, the inside story of how people have produced certain images. You know, but I think it'd be foolish to, you know, if you go to a crit day now and go to somebody's crit, wherever it is in the country, there is definitely a transition away from your traditional plans, elevations, those kind of more traditional drawings towards, you know, your 3D perspective sections, you, you know, your technical D, you know, technical 3D sections, you've got your, your 3D models, your 3D printed models, your animations. I mean, it, the world is changing and it's definitely drastically affecting not only the way that we communicate, whether that's through social media or through the way we present our work, but it's changing the way we just communicate generally and that sort of leads me on now i think we might we might run into a slight hiccup here because i've got a a gif from prepped architects which is a series of still images that shows the transition and the development of a project that they've done i mean in 15 seconds they explain their whole design in in a, in a matter of well in 15 seconds they've got from start to finish how it's developed. I'm sure if you if you type in Bert, um, um, I, Josh, I, if the GIF doesn't work on on this presentation because of the system, you can even share your screen and show oh. and show GIF on your screen. If you go on the class where you can upload things, that should be oh, well. You have four buttons on the bottom or on the on the bottom of your screen, which is the microphone, the telephone, the camera, and then share your screen. Okay, bear with me then. Two seconds. Because it works very well with the static presentation, but then when you have videos or animation, yeah. 
Let me, let me just share the screen. Hold on. That come on now. Let's wait. Oh, hold on. Okay. <laughs> there we go. It's not the best quality, I'll admit. But yeah, so you see that what they've done here is they've used a series of still images and slowly but surely they've literally gone through this whole development of a design in about 15 seconds into this tower block. I'll just scroll up a little bit so you can see the top of it. It's uh, again, it's just another another example to reiterate how architectural architectural communication is, is completely changing. Let me just stop that. So to speed things up again there we go now just imagine that little gif is in that bottom right hand corner going around that was that was the intention but anyway and i think that's that's where we are i think that the way that technology's just advanced and, and is completely changing the way that we communicate and, and the reason why i chose that that gif and that movable image is without a doubt that has been influenced by instagram because obviously with th th these images that chris precht was doing who's probably the, the architect that I look to most for inspiration. He, he's been doing these sort of movable images before Instagram even allowed video. And, and I think that's, that's the sort of loophole that people are finding is actually, how can we present our work in a way that is most easily shareable on the platforms that are made available? I think, you know, looking at, looking at that image there, it explained to me exactly the, the the development of the project from a single entity all the way up to a you know a 200 unit tower block or however many it was in 15 seconds and that is easily uploadable to instagram and it's something that somebody can go go down their screen catch the eye because it's moving it's not something that people expect on instagram be it, you know the video it, it has come into it now and and, 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 and instantly get an idea of, of how their projects developed and the, the sort of explanation behind it. And I, and I think it's not just that, you know, we look at the new software, so, you know, the Rhino, Grasshopper, you know, Maya, all these new softwares that are coming out now, it's just completely changing the way that we can communicate, how we can design the more organic and, and fluid designs. And, and, and likewise with animation, I found a lot during my time at architecture school uh, over in Leicester. Animation was massive because actually, you know, guys were producing VR walkthroughs, video animations, because they could just literally call it cheating if you want to, but they wanted that extra little bit of board space to try and showcase their project. And they had the board and they could just wheel a TV in front of it and go, oh, by the way, here's my complete project all in one go and and, and it, it's just so easy and i think likewise if you're in practice for those of you that are, are in a practice at the moment if you want to show a client a design what easier way to do it than a short animation going through or going around it and you know we're moving away because i think that is one of the difficulties and, and outside of social media now for a second one of the difficulties that i think everyone would have within a practice is clients do struggle to understand how 2d technical drawings are going to become this 3d entity and what it's going to look like you know elevations help of course they do but sometimes you've got really intricate stepped details and, and a lot of things going on in a project that you just can't get through in a, t in a 2d image so create a 3d model create an animation going through it and actually that's that's going to garner a massive amount of interest on social media because it's just unseen it's not what it's not what regular regular practices are doing at the moment i mean the bigger practices are yes but you know the smaller scale ones certainly aren't so i know it's a bit of a sort of a a, a sidestep but i think it's important to actually appreciate just how much you know these two entities are coming together you've got technology which is driving the way that we design driving the design that we produce but then at the same time you've got social media which is affecting the way that we present those designs and they sort of they come together to actually semi-revolutionize the way that we we showcase architecture I was, you know there, there are tv programs now where people <laughs> i was watching it the other night it's the weirdest thing i've ever watched is there's 
there, there's a couple, they want a design, they want an extension to the house, whatever, and two architects do a VR render of exactly what it is and they walk through the design and they pick which one they want based on the VR image. And, you know, th this is this is sort of completely changing the game of how how, how we're presenting and, and how how architects are designing and actually can get their ideas across. But just the just a little sidestep, but important to note that, and I think it's going to continue for the for the foreseeable. Um, but I think that another key thing that I did want to talk about is how social media is affecting the work that students produce. I think it's going to come into the. I've got a slide that you'll you'll appreciate later on that I think it would be foolish for me not to touch on um, about the sort of the mental health in architecture. Um, but to start with the positives, I think with us students, the likes of Pinterest, Instagram, you know, so many different avenues for us to be inspired by. I know I personally, when I was a student, I would be constantly looking at the Bartlett Instagram pages where they're sharing current student work and particularly unit 10 of CJ Lim's unit, which is, you know, an example of some of the work behind on, on the slide there. I, I think there's so much information out there that students can make use of and, and really inspire them. With that though, obviously comes what I've, I call the imitation effect. And I'm finding from my time at using the blog that projects like this as I mean, I personally love them. I think they're absolutely stunning. I mean, you look at the, the drawings there and it's a piece of artwork, but we are seeing a transition towards these style of projects. We're moving away from the traditional when we're moving towards the kind of fantasy projects, the thought provoking sort of satirical projects maybe, you know, and, and I think that is down to social media because you've got the front runners in architecture within the country and across the world, you know, your Bartlett's, your AAs, your Cyarchs, who have got massive, massive social media followings of hundreds of thousands of followers. And, and obviously people are looking up to them as, as the best. They're being nominated for the precedence medals and what have you. And I think slowly that is filtering down to other architecture schools where students are trying to imitate that kind of work and, whether it's a transition and it's just certain phases that you know architecture goes through over time but i am seeing a massive massive influence from the likes of social media on on the kind of work that students are producing uh, i think more people want the the glitzy glamour showpiece renders now i don't know luigi i mean i welcome your thoughts on this at the end of the lecture is what you think because obviously you're you're in the trenches, you go through it on a daily basis. But I, I certainly found when I was at university that there was this focus, like I mentioned before, your traditional plans and elevations, they might be in the portfolio to tick a box. But what people really want to do now is have the showpiece sort of, I mean, they're, they're pieces of art at the end of the day. I mean, look at the two images there. They are they are pieces of art that, you know, show showcase a project. But that that's the way I feel it's affecting students work i think students are seeing this using social media using pinterest using whatever platform they've got the even just i mean the internet if you want to go down to its basic most basic form and they're seeing they're seeing these projects from the bar that they're seeing the projects that are nominated for the precedence medals and the people are going oh maybe i should be doing things like that and and then obviously it, it transgresses into i mean don't wrong there's some beautiful beautiful projects but I think sometimes you can end up with a bit of imitation and potentially not the thought behind it that there should be. And really, it, it's more wanting to do things because it looks nice rather than actually having a genuine reason behind doing something. Um, so and that sort of leads leads me on to my next slide, which is, again, as I mentioned. Touching on the mental health in architecture. I don't think I could do the lecture today without mentioning it because I think it's such a key, key topic that not many people really talk about. And I think I, I undoubtedly feel that social media has got a part to play in it. I think people are only ever posting their absolute highest quality standard of work because that's all they feel that they can show. 
and obviously people are seeing seeing that high quality work and they either get inspired by it and want to try and replicate it or unfortunately for some people if it's a an unachievable standard it can actually be quite demoralizing and and really really affect people in term in the terms of what they're trying to do um it's it's a difficult one i think like anything there's going to be downsides um you are only seeing the shop window you're only seeing the things that people want you to see <laughs> you know <laughs> i think it's i mean this example here it was a precedence medal winner and it's absolutely stunning there's no doubt about it the work there is is fantastic but it is social media putting things like this on a pedestal to the point where students are sitting there thinking that this is the kind of work that they need to produce even though it might not be something that they they sort of sits well with them and it just creates this kind of mental battle of trying to constantly produce these ridiculously high quality images um and it takes time. I think I can openly admit I didn't actually even discover my own artistic flair, my own style, the way that I like to present my images until my fourth year, in you know, my first year of my master's degree. You know, a lot of students I know here are going to be undergraduates, so it might sound a bit far fetched, but actually I, I went through <clears throat> I went through university in my first few years just you know dabbling in different styles not really knowing exactly where i stood and, and what i wanted to do and then in my fourth year I, I really honed down on exactly how i wanted it to be um but that was after many a night of getting frustrated sitting on you know i think a lot of people a lot of, well maybe it's just me but i think some people might agree you can end up spending hours and hours on a pin in a pinterest black hole just constantly scrolling trying to find that inspiration you find it at two o'clock in the morning you think it's going to be the the answer that you need you go to sleep wake up the next morning and you're just like actually that was a load <laughs> that was worthless it's done nothing so that is the one caveat that i'd like to add to this lecture for all the benefits that social media can provide to people I think everyone has got to be very, very careful about the way you use it and, and making sure that you use it wisely and, and don't get yourself too bogged down with what could potentially be, you know, an unachievable standard and, and just use it for the resources that it is for inspiration, for tutorials to help you get to where you want to be and, and don't let it bog you down you know don't let it bog you down too much so moving on to the sort of i want to say the second half but it's it's more the last quarter really but looking more towards what you can do you know whoever's out there whether you're an architect whether you're an architecture student whatever whatever it is and this is sort of where i feel a little bit more comfortable talking about what i you know talking about what i've done how you can use social media to brand yourself you know, if you're an architecture student, use it to get yourself a job, use it just to put your name out there, meet people, get some feedback, try and really utilize it in a way to get all the benefits from it and just help you progress that that little bit further. Um, it's more of a business angle, I suppose, if you want to put it that way. But I'd like to think that people are going to come out of the, the lecture and actually have some something that they can use and put towards to, to really push themselves on. Um, Everything I'll talk about will only be from my personal experience. So again, like everything, you're going to have to take it with a bit of pinch of salt. But that does mean that I am speaking from experience and the stuff that I've done, I can put my hand on my heart and say it has worked for me to the point where I've, I have been offered jobs. I have got work through it. You know, I've got a, a variety of different benefits from doing it. And it's cost me nothing because it's only ever been on platforms, you know, social media platforms that are free. Um, you know, I think it's a difficult transition. You know, you're looking at, you know, branding yourself. I think a lot of students would be going, me, you know, what, what? No, I can't do that. I'm a, I'm a student. I can't, you know, but it's the complete opposite, actually. And I think it's a, it was a massive, massive mental transition for me to go, actually, I need to put myself out there. I can't just wait. You know, there's not architecture companies just coming to knock on my and offer me a job i've actually got to put myself out there and and give something because 
it's twofold. Not only are you going to be putting yourself out there and increasing your job prospects, whatever it is, whatever, however it ends up benefit you sort of financially, business-wise, you're going to develop yourself. You know, you're going to take wrong turns. You might have a couple of failures, but they're all going to be lessons. You're going to learn from them, and it's only going to help you moving forwards. I mean, I mean, I've I've done some some different bits with the blog. I started YouTube tutorials. I'm thinking about maybe doing a podcast. I'm I'm really learning as I go, and you know, I've got videos on YouTube that have got like 90 views of people probably half my family have just gone it to on out of pity give me a couple of views and then I've got some drawings that have got like you know a thousand two thousand views on them and, and it's just it's all it's all a learning curve I can appreciate some people are sitting there going I don't want to I don't want to you know put my personal life on show for everybody which is why you need to disassociate that and almost create profiles so whether it's Instagram LinkedIn is a massive one, and I'll talk about all of these as I, as I go through Facebook, Twitter, whatever it is, and just start documenting. You know, the first posts are going to be difficult. Of course they are, because you're going to be to an audience of, let's face it, zero, one, two, three, the odd, the odd random person that follows you. Um, and you'll probably try and find excuses not to do it, like, oh, it's not a finished piece yet, I'm, I'm not ready to post it. But actually... The way to really put yourself out there and start building an audience and a community, which I think is the most important thing, is just seeing progress. You know, I know a lot of people, a lot of artists using Instagram, they start with a bit of an outline drawing and you see it become, you know, half of it's been shaded and then, you know, they're adding a the line work to it. And then before you know it, you see this masterpiece and it's, 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 in, it's enjoyable to see. People are going to want to see your, your progression. Um, and, and that takes it itself in different forms. You know, some people out there might go, oh, I, I don't like writing. I'm rubbish at writing. Blog's clearly not for you. But you might like video editing. You might not know how to video edit, but you might say, actually, my my Wolverhampton School of Architecture is, is pretty interesting. I'm sure people, I mean, Lu, Luigi would probably love it if you did this and became a, U, a famous YouTuber because obviously it's going to put Wolverhampton on the map. But you might just do a vlog of your day and just show people what it's like and build an audience and build a community. And, and I think that's what it is. It's, it's social networking and I'll come on to the networking element of it in the next slide, but actually you, you really are, you've just got to put yourself out there. I mean, it, it does work. I, I've been posting just stuff that I've done old portfolio stuff that was just, on my computer that I thought, oh, I haven't really shared, I don't really share any of my own personal work on the blog because that's, <laughs> there's just a bit of a, you know, a, a mental aspect in that for me. So I just shared it on my own personal LinkedIn page and it gets so much interaction. And actually a few months ago, I had a practice in Shrewsbury offer me a job, just out the blue, just got a message from the small local practice. A guy said, hi there, just wanted to let you know, I've seen some of your work, you look like you'd be a great fit for us are you looking for a job opportunity we think we might have an opening and obviously i wasn't at the time but it was it just goes to show i just wanted to i'm not saying that to show off or anything i just showing that it does work and without wanting to sound like i put myself out but it, i wasn't trying to find a job either i was literally just doing it for the for the idea of i just want to share my work I've got all this work that I've done. I've spent eight months doing it. It's my final master's degree, poured my heart and soul into it. I might as well just share it. And lo and behold, at the end of it, I got a job. And, and I think that's where where we move on to the the next element of it, which is is the networking, you know, the social networking, which is really where it stems from. And, and I think this is where, particularly to the students, architects maybe as well I'm, I'm not sure depends how which what how which way inclined you are but really as, as students you can build a network of and a community of people you know i know for a fact that my my friends at university in the studio they got me through my architecture degree there's no doubt about it i don't i don't think anybody out there is saying that you're going to go through it on your own but also I was sharing my work on Instagram and I had a few people that, you know, would be providing me with feedback, providing me with not, you know, some nice comments about, you know, they like this and they like that and certain bits. So you almost end up with, you almost end up with your sort of studio 
colleagues and then you've almost got this like virtual studio colleagues you've got two groups of people that you can rely on you can flick your ideas backwards and forwards and i think that's what it is it's why i set started the blog in the first place and i think if you're posting your own work it's, it's going to be even more beneficial to you because at the end of the day you're going to get realistic feedback from other students as well you know you're getting a different view of opinion and, it, and it's going to make it's going to make a massive difference now don't be wrong it's not going to happen straight away you know you might start off with your your, your one or two followers and you know your mom and your gran are saying looks fantastic you're the best architect there is you know and, and that's all well and good but actually the more and more you post the more people see your work and actually you start building this community of people that can really push you along and make a massive massive difference and i think you know long term who, who knows what you know that that person that you're talking to could become you know a, a grad a graduate part one assistant part two assistant at make architect big wherever it is some big architecture firm and, and they might put the they might put a recommendation for you you know you, you don't you really don't know where these connections are going to go i know personally from with the blog that i've got i could probably list just off the top of my head uh, five six seven people that i know that are based down in london that i could call on and actually say how about we meet up and have a chat and talk about this this and this and you know would you be interested in collaborate in some way or you know and, and it's really the the options are endless and that's what i've learned through social media is actually you don't need to be limited to where you are i mean a little bit like we are today you, you don't need to physically meet people to do things you know you can just share ideas online use zoom or whatever it is i know people are using it for pub quizzes at the moment but why not use it for something beneficial and actually just have a bit of chat with somebody and, and and bat some ideas backwards and forwards um you know that that could turn into you know internships graduate jobs or i mean that i don't want to keep hammering home about getting jobs or whatever but i think that is the extent that it's getting to that that one little connection that you make could be that first step on the ladder and, and likewise the other way around you're you know, I'd certainly be recommending some of the guys that I've spoken to through the blog and recommend them because I know the work that they produce is fantastic. So, and I think it's just actually thinking about it in that way. I think some people obviously think social media and they go, oh, don't want people to invade my privacy. What, somebody's going to steal my work or what have you. Actually, I think you need to look at the other side of the coin and just think about the benefits of it. You know, there are risks. Of course, there are. There's always going to be risks with anything you do. But actually, the benefits could be, you know, massive in, in, in the long run. So I'm just going to quickly run through my sort of advice for people on using social media to do these kind of things and, and what I've done and found, found benefit from. Um, I think Instagram's the main one at the moment um they're always changing but i think instagram is a great tool if you just want an online portfolio i mean at the end of the day nothing is easy when somebody says you know how can i view some of your work to say put this you know at whatever your instagram handle is and they can find a, a portfolio of your work they can pick the work that they want to look into in more detail it's a it's an online catalog you can create a website, of course, obviously it looks a little bit more impressive and shows some other skills that you might have in, in the sort of web design. But I, I started with Instagram and, and worked my, my way up to a website. I didn't, you know, don't don't run before you can walk. You might as well be sharing it on Instagram and then and then move on to the more detailed elements of it. Um, I think the other thing as well, you know, don't don't feel like you've got to just post architecture people people employ people they don't employ machines you know at the end of the day if people really wanted somebody that was just going to draw something consistently and you know they'd outsource it because it's a lot cheaper a lot easier and they've got less hassle you know that people want to want to see the side of you you know share architectural photography if you like a bit of graphic design share some of that and, and start building a, a diverse community because at the end of the day you've got nothing to lose by sharing sharing what you're interested in and and I think it's only going to stand stand to benefit you in the long run. I think looking looking back, if somebody had told me four years ago, I'd have seventy thousand followers on an Instagram page that I'd started just to try and give what I honestly thought was going to be me and my friends at 
uni a chance to share our work I, I wouldn't have believed you but just that consistency of posting every day you know you slowly build a community and that snowballs if i was to sort of try and narrow it down i think the hardest thing you'll do is start as long as you're consistent your following will continue to grow because naturally people will just see the more that you do and just use some hashtags because it might sound a bit cringy but actually people are using hashtags i mean if you put hashtag architecture student i guarantee a lot of people will view your work including me because it's one that i check on a regular basis so you know and, and all of a sudden and this is what can happen you've got a great piece of work you tag you use a hashtag somebody like me sees it and shares it onto my page with a number of viewers or even smaller pages and then all of a sudden seventy thousand people are potentially seeing your work and i think it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's an impressive feat to be able to go to a, a sort of potential employer and say well actually this is where you can find all my work i've been published on these pages you know and and, and actually rather than feeling like you've got to go down the traditional route and sit there and write your cv and you know put your tie on and whatever it is it's, you know break the break the mold a little bit go out of your way and, and just push yourself out there and i think the other the other main one for the students out there and and you know people in practice but the students out there looking for job opportunities is linkedin LinkedIn is massive, absolutely massive. And it's at the moment, it, it's underutilized. It's getting more popular. It's very much like Facebook in 2012, 2013, you know, where people are starting, although it is more business orientated, it is massive because it's putting you in the shop front for people that have already got people, businesses are going on to LinkedIn and they're either looking for potential employers or they're expecting to see the more business side of work. And I think if you're on LinkedIn posting, even if you're posting what you're up to at university, the, the latest render that you've done, some plans or whatever, you know, you really are putting your front, your shop window to people that you probably wouldn't even dream of being able to reach. You know, you can connect with CEOs, you can connect with, you know, project architects. You really can get to get to the people that, Let's face it, if you were to call up a practice, you, there's no way you're going to get through past the, the various levels of people that they've got in their practice to, to, to sort of stop people inquiring for jobs. Um, and like I say, the, the example that I used earlier, I, I'm speaking from experience, I've actually been offered a job through it. So it, it does work. Um, and just start conversations with people. You know, don't, don't go hello, nice to meet you, thanks for connecting. Don't suppose you've got a job going, have you? You know, that's definitely not the way to approach it. Just try and connect with people, use it for what social media is and, and, and just network a little bit. Um, I, I personally do that. I try and speak to people. I mean, from a practice point of view, obviously I'm not looking for a job at the moment. So I, I try and just touch base with either potential clients, people within the field, um, and just just try and build a build a basis just build people that you can call upon if ever if ever you need them because at the end of the day word of mouth is massive and linkedin is that sort of first step on the ladder um again use hashtags because that helps to sp spread the word um and yeah link linkedin's a massive one if you're a student because what what linkedin is going to offer you is just that ability to contact top top tier you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to crush dreams or anything. You're not going to get Bjarke Ingalls. You're not going to get Norman Foster. You're not going to get Renzo Piano. But, you know, you are, you are going to potentially be getting the project architects, at, you know, at Foster and Partners. You're going to be getting, you know, slightly higher up the run than you would have reaching a receptionist who's going to put the phone down to you and say, sorry, we're not hiring at the moment. And, and by you sharing your work, who knows what could come to you? It's, it's you've got nothing to lose in in my personal opinion and i've seen some great benefits from it and the next one is youtube now this comes as a bit with a pinch of salt really i think i don't think you're going to get many lectures out there that are going to say go and use youtube all the time because i think obviously there's there are negatives that come with it but what i would suggest is 
it can be a massive tutor for you. You know, there's people much better than me out there that are putting out tutorials on how to do certain graphics. And, you know, we talked about that unachievable standard earlier. This is now the complete opposite. It's actually going out of your way to learn and sit down and, and use the resources um, to really hone in on, on developing your skills. I think now more so than ever, I think, you know, we're seeing people at the moment saying, you know, it's time to work on yourself and develop yourself whilst you're in quarantine. I mean, now is it's such a good time to just go through and certain render styles, you know, certain ways of detailing, learning new software. It's the first thing anybody does nowadays is just go, go straight onto YouTube and, and use it for the learning resource that it is. Now, like I mentioned before, if you want to put yourself out there and you like the idea of developing a bit of a, a video skills and what have you, then why not start sharing either some of your animations or start sharing sharing your own experience of architecture school. People are going to be interested. You're going to develop a community of people. And 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 it's the same thing again. They're, they're all, I'm going to sound like a bit of a broken record really, but the whole point of social media is develop a community, find like-minded people and, and just start talking to each other i think ironically people look at social media and technology and say nobody talks to each other anymore you know everybody's always on their phones and, and ironically it's, you, you just want to respond and say well actually i'm talking to somebody that i would never get the opportunity to talk to because they're based in singapore or they live down in london and i can't get down there at the moment so i think use use so use use youtube as your own personal tutor and actually soak up as much of the try not to get distracted don't be wrong those suggested videos down the side are going to seem a lot more interesting than sitting and watching a tutorial video but you know, I, i've done a few with the blog outside of that there are some absolutely fantastic youtube tutorials online that will tell you how to do anything and everything from new software i started watching some youtube tutorials on you know, certain elements of Revit, Rhino. I mean, there's, there's so much of a wealth of knowledge out there. And I think, you know, I know some people may or may not class YouTube as a social media outlet, but I think you've got to use it for, for what it is. And it's an excellent tutor, you know, a second tutor. Not not trying to replace you, Luigi, I promise. I'm not trying to replace you with technology, but, you know, it's a... But you are, it, it is, it's just, it's the way the world's going. And I think there's, there's so many more experts out there that can give you that extra little bit of advice and, and, and why not, why not utilize it? So, right. Last, last couple, last one. Now this is an interesting one. I, I had to put this one on here because I'm just really, I'm in my own mind. I'm really not sure where it's going. It, it, I'll put it on here as a suggestion for the, the sort of, the potential architects out there or students that want to make a big impact and get ahead of the trend. So TikTok, for anybody that doesn't know, it was a little bit like Vine was a while ago. It's short videos, only videos, no imaging, no messaging. It's just pretty much just short one minute videos. I mean, at the moment, it will be a distraction because it's in its early stages, it's viral videos, it's dances and all sorts of whatever's going on. But actually, if if you think about it properly with a business mindset and you want to get ahead of the trend and reach an, a massive amount of people and develop a, a big community of people and find your own niche, TikTok could be the way to go. I mean, people are already starting to see that there's this sort of massive brands going on to TikTok and using it. So Again, I won't say too much more on it because I can't say I'm a, I'm a professional on it myself, but I just thought I'd wanted to mention for those people out there that are thinking, you know, I want to explore something outside of architecture potentially, then then why not why not try TikTok and just see if you can build your own audience and your own community in that way? Right. Now, I'd imagine some people are sitting there going, how on earth can you leave Facebook and Twitter till last? And... I'll be honest, it, it's not the best till last either. It, it's last for a reason because I personally see these going downward in, in, in sort of potential and, and trends. I think Facebook will stick around and they, they'll stick around. They won't be going anywhere. 
Um, students, I think it's interesting if you want to share your work that, you know, I think Instagram is where you're going to build more of a community. Um, for me, Facebook, for those of you that are architects out there, Facebook's massive for you right now. You know, I think if you're working in a practice and you want to try and add value to a practice, then use Facebook because that's where I think, like I mentioned before, the average age is sort of 40. So you're looking at sort of that 25 to 50 year old. They're your perfect clients. You know, they're the perfect age for your clients. So I use Facebook a lot and I found a lot of benefit in practice from sharing things to Facebook and getting potential clients through that avenue. Um, but again, try and not knowing the age of the audience is a bit difficult at the moment. So I'm sort of trying to tune it towards students, but also looking at the architecture side of it. You know, if you if the architects out there, to be fair, even if you're a student and you want to go into a practice and try and make a big difference, use Facebook to share, share the work that you're doing. And you, again, you'll build a, a following of people. And you, like I mentioned before, just today, I've had inquiries come through through Facebook that is potentially going to be paid work for the practice that I work in. Um, so it's just adding another string to your bow uh, to, for a potential employer. But again, if there's people out, again, I don't want to just keep rabbiting on, but if there's people out there that want more advice and want some, like any anything that want to talk to me about it, either through the blog or whatever, email me, just dr drop me a message. I'm more than happy to help people out because I'm, you know, I, I do this stuff for fun. I enjoy it. I like seeing, I like see, reading things and seeing trends and seeing how people are, are progressing. Um, so, right. Last last couple of slides, and they're, they're not going to be too long because I know I've been going on for a little bit. The last one, the last one I just want to say is whatever I've advised, whatever I've suggested, just, just do what you're passionate about. doesn't matter what it is, you know. I know speaking to, and I've spoken to quite a few people in my undergraduate degree and, and people that have got quite a lot of response on the blog is if you're an undergraduate student, you're getting towards the end of your degree and you don't know what you want to do and you maybe don't think architecture is the way that you want to go, don't worry about it. It's a fantastic degree to have under your belt. Just explore what you're passionate about. It might be completely different. It might be along the same lines. It might be, you know, graphic design. It might be, you know, logo design. It might be just doing a bit like Antonio. You might just want to do our beautiful architecture visualizations. That's fine, you know. But at the end of the day, to, to win in the social media game, I've said it before and I'll say it again. It's about um, it's about consistency. And, and to be consistent, you've got to have something that you're passionate about. Don't be wrong, I struggled because I studied and did the blog at the same time, but I was passionate and that got me through it. Now, did I have to take some sabbaticals for eight months whilst I was doing my degree? Yes, I will admit it. I'm not, I can't, I'm not, I can't hold my hands up and say that I've done four years straight because it did get a bit too much and I just had to prioritise. But architecture is my passion, so my degree had to come first. But, you know, I think... At the end of the day, if you're passionate about what you're doing, that will shine through beyond any sort of social media aspect of it. And that, that's what's going to take you to that that next level. And it, it's what's going to make you happy, which is what, at the end of the day, it's what we're trying to do, isn't it? You know, the point is going through life, not being happy. So I, I'd just follow your passion. If, you, if that's, you know, architectural photography and you just want to post on Instagram and you're not bothered about anything else, do that. You say, not really bothered think you're into architecture but you're not quite sure but you're going to just go around i interviewed somebody for the blog the other day his name was ben he was at loughborough university and he went on a year long study well say study trip he went on a gap year and just went around the world and looked at sustainable buildings and and filmed it all you might fancy looking at the film element of it do do that just do whatever you're passionate about and i think it'll 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 push you through and and get you to where you where you need to be and then one more again like i say just just do what you're passionate about start take what i've you know knowledge and knowledge is nothing without action so some of you might be sitting there and thinking i don't know what to do just sit take some time move forward do something take the first step start the instagram profile start the linkedin profile 
do the basics, get it done, and just make that first post and don't look back. You know, be consistent. If you can do it even for six months, I'd imagine the audience you'd grow just in that time, especially on like things like Instagram. It'd be massive. You'd have such a, you'd develop such a following. You'd see so many benefits from it. You'd have a, a lovely, commu- a small, tight knit community of people that support the work that you do and, and wait, can't wait to see the posts that you put out. Um, and, and just don't be afraid of the unknown. You talk, I can't actually believe it. I, I love it. I'm, I'm, I'm honored and really glad that the read has asked me to do what I'm doing today. But it's it, the lecture's being given by somebody that three years ago had no idea what he was doing and only just got he got a degree anyway. And I'm taught, you know, I'm posting works of top high quality architecture students from across the world. And now I'm sat here giving a lecture to. 60 people or however many it was that to talk about what how how to do it themselves so i just think just start you'll learn so much you'll probably fail a few times but just it's there's so much benefit from learning from those failures anyway you, you really got nothing to lose there's no upfront cost because none of the platforms are going to charge you for posting anything and actually with things like youtube if you do become mega popular they might end up even paying you a bit of a side income so that you know, you can you can pay for all your modeling materials or all your software or whatever it is. So, like I say, just just start and follow your passion and you'll end up where you need to be. And lo and behold, I've ended up with a decent following and I get to interview people on a, on a regular basis and, and learn myself and I constantly keep my, my ear to the ground. So that's me. If you want to find anything, the Architecture Student blog, like I say, if you go on to if you go on to google you should be able to find me um website is obviously just the architecture student blog.com and the most recent venture that i've started um is youtube again no idea just started with i've got a mac thankfully so i've got iMovie on it and i'm producing videos now i can class myself as it's some form of video editor of sorts i suppose and that I'm producing YouTube tutorials from the bits that I've learned and what I do, and it just keep keeps me going. So yeah, I, I've seen that there's some questions going backwards and forwards. So if anybody's got any questions, then by all means. Okay, I, I, I will moderate then. We have a few questions. Uh, the very first is Finn. What level have you taken? And then uh, what kind of software to start a concept? Finn, do you want to ask directly to Josh? Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, if anybody wants to, obviously, like you say, try and moderate so everyone's not I'm, I'm collecting all the questions. Uh, well, okay, let's let's answer then, Finn. What 11 have you taken, and then what software to start the concept? Give um, your answer, I answered that. <sighs> right. A-levels really comes back a little bit to what I've just said about following my passion. I, I did art. Um, design and technology so product design and then i absolutely love sport and i love biomedical science so i did pe as well and everyone was like why are you doing those and you know try and get to university and i just did what i wanted to do because it's i enjoyed it and i did pe and i come out the end of it got to university and got a degree so yeah don't i can understand where the question is coming from obviously art and design topics are going to help because you're going to develop some element of skills and as part of the application process but literally just do what you want to do i i, I personally just did i did art and design because i wanted to and then i chucked pe in there because i i just loved it i love doing sport and i love the, the i love going to the gym and i love the sort of bio biomedical side to things so and then what was the other one? Software. Software to, to do it for a concept. Whatever. Well, it's a two. It's a bit of a two, two part answer really. The first one would be whatever you're comfortable with. I, I got through, and some people are probably going to be disgusted by this, but I got through six years of uni just using SketchUp. Literally, I just use SketchUp and a. a had a lot of Photoshop, I've got to be honest, it wasn't just SketchUp. I did a lot of Photoshop work that went with it. But 
you know stick to what you know because at the end of the day if you if you've got the time i mean now is slightly different because if you've got the time to learn a software i look back and think yeah I, I could have spent a little bit more time with the likes of rhino and really pushed my push my my skills but unfortunately well i say unfortunately i did my master's degree part-time so i worked nine to five four days a week and had one one day off to go to university so really i could only do my university work from about six in the evening till 10 11 o'clock at night i just didn't have the time to spend to learn software as well as do the uni work on top of it so just whatever you feel comfortable with you know i don't think you could go wrong with sketchup revit or rhino at the moment they're, they're massive 3ds max is another fantastic bit of software there's so many just just pick what works for you and what you feel most comfortable with then i will answer both the question are the same uh Regarding the A-level, I used to interview students that would like to do architecture. And the most important things in during your A-level, you should like develop your passion, as George said, but you should be able to start thinking in a very consistent way. I'm not looking for someone who is like a great punter, a great like already architect able to sketch a section. I'm, I like to see people who are like, people who can think in their way. I like looking at thinker, talking with thinker, and find people who really are curious about the world, about architecture. So I just said a level, be passionate, and know that it's more you you growing the more you learning during the level. Uh, the second thing to get in the software for the concept. Uh, OK, this is what the lecture used to say every time. The concept is in your mind. Then you will use every tools you want. Just feed your minds with ideas, and then you will find, as Josh said, the tool which, which you feel more confident. Uh, have you have the idea in the first place, is it? So you've got to have the idea in the first place to make the software do what you need it to do. So I'd agree with that. Yeah, great. yeah. very, very good answer that one, actually. And then uh, Katie from the UTC uh, was asking, uh, not that Katie, you, your microphone doesn't work as last time. Um, any tips for self-guarding your work on social media? Yeah, I, I'd assume this is in terms of like plagiarism or people trying to like take your work. I, I would assume that's the sort of question that's being put forward there. Um, one, the one thing I would say is, it really doesn't happen as often as you'd think. I think that, that that people we've got a very we can have a very pessimistic view of the world that people are going to try and take your ideas or take what you're doing. If you really want to, you know, if you really want to make it secure, you can put watermarks on it or or whatever. But at the same time, be be relaxed about it. If if somebody takes your work as frustrating as it is, to try and take it for the compliment that it is that they. They think it's good enough to steal, um, and 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 just uh, yeah. If you really want to be protective over it, then then just obviously put some sort of watermark or signature on it. The only other thing I'd say is chances are if somebody does try and steal your work, just messaging them saying you are aware that you've stolen my work is enough to actually scare them off and take it down because a lot of these pages don't stick around for long. They get reported and they get taken down relatively quickly. I have seen it. I'm not going to lie and say I haven't seen it. And I've asked. I've got a few of the guys that I'm quite close to. Again, my virtual studio, for want of a better word, that have said, "This guy's taken my work. Can you do me a favour and post about it to get people to report it?" And we sort of spearheaded this reporting spree on this one page, and it got taken down. So. As much as it will happen, and, and unfortunately, it's just the way of life. But don't worry about it. Just, just overcome it, and 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 just accept the fact that people think your work's good enough to steal in the first place. Then we have Jake, Jake from the Sheffield University, who is doing his dissertation exploring the relation between architecture and social media. Jake, do you wanna ask the question to uh, a quick quick question to Josh? silence oh just click on oh, just click on top on your uh, okay mainly let, let me try if i can i can unmute you oh you didn't 
you didn't like allow the use of microphone. So mainly what, what Jake's ask is that as he's exploring this relation between architecture and social media, which we, we had a chat by via email with Jake. It's a very like new argument. So as you said, three years ago, uh, what seems what we are talking now is could be something very good, what you're talking about. And it's still a new things. You won't find book, you won't find article. It's more or less that you will find blogs around the internet. Yeah. So if you have some experience or story that you would like to, to share or like just quick uh, tips, so let's go in this direction, let's look at these for Jay. Uh, I think that the one thing that I would say is a bit like what you're doing now, just try and soak up everything you can. I ask questions of people that you can see out there. You put particularly focusing on the intrusive aspect of the topic. Stories are experience of how easy it is for a member of the public to take a photo and post this to the world. Yeah, I mean, like I mentioned before, I've tried not to dwell on it too much because obviously there are going to be downsides to everything. Um, I think there is an element, I can understand where you're coming from with it with it being intrusive. Um, but I think, again, everything's just got to be taken with a pinch of salt and, and a bit like the previous comment, if people are trying to duplicate, plagiarise or do anything with other work, then you've just got to try and take it for the compliment that it is and, and, and report it and, and try and safeguard as, as best as you can. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd welcome if he's got any sort of follow-up questions to that. I think that was a bit of a wishy-washy answer, I suppose, but just trying to get to the, the crux of exactly exactly yeah. what what he means by the question of, you know, experiences and how easy it is for a member of the public to take a photo and post it. It's very easy. It's how I do it. I've got an app on my phone that I can copy the link to the profile and repost it. Now, not everybody's got the same intentions as me because if somebody posts, I've had one, only I've had one person message me and say, appreciate you reposting the work, but this was for such and such a competition. I don't want it to be seen as sort of trying to impede the competition, which could get me kicked out. Would you mind taking it down? And, and it came down within the hour. You know, I think we've got to look, we've got to try and be as optimistic as we can with people that, not all it's not always going to be people trying to copy work or do bad things it's just you know that there can be misunderstandings and just approach people and, and just try and try and regarding, try. This, regarding these things of publishing things as Paul Borden ask it's like a really task sometimes is an headache because you have to keep everything live like the all the Instagram profile Facebook and all the profiles uh, have you got some some like tips or some apps that will help you to uh make everything live every day yeah it's it's something that again that there are tools online and there's so many different ones that can sort of automatically post them um i'll be honest majority i mean instagram's already got integration with facebook so instagram and facebook are sort of ticked off in one go um i've got um, on the website that I've designed for the practice that I work for, I've got the social media channels on the website. So as soon as something's updated on there, it's updated on the website. So, I mean, technology's come a long way now. You, you, really, you can automate the whole thing. I, I don't. I, I should do, and it's something that I'm planning to look into. Um, but I actually... I, I try and find everything myself, write the captions myself, and, and post them from Instagram. They then get sent straight to Facebook. Um Pinterest is a different one. It's a different sort of, if you wanted to start posting on Pinterest, I use it just for my own sort of, it's a bit like a scrapbooking app more so than anything for me. Um, and YouTube, again, I'll just take a crop and put it straight onto Instagram for, so people can see see what I've done on YouTube. But there are there are sort of apps that you can prepare everything and it will post it for you. There, there are there's none that I can think of that come to mind straight away. Um, but again, if Paul wants to drop me an email, I am going to be looking into that in the next couple of days. So as soon as I find one that works well for me, I'll, I'll let him know exactly what it is. Thanks. Um, Chloe was asking if this relation with social media will create an, an, an unrealistic approach to design. So client will ask you something that you cannot realize. What do you think? Chloe, if you want to ask. Yeah, I've got, yeah, I was going to say, if Chloe's there, she wants to expand on that yeah. a bit. There's a, there's a long question on, you can go on show notes 
I got the last question is from Chloe. It's hi Josh. Do you think that yeah. as a great as social media is to create inspiration and visualization? Do you think that social media platform can also create an unrealistic approach to in design? How would you uh, say social media separate what is more of a realistic design compared to those that aren't like uh, that aren't? Uh, like, for example, when I was working in a practice over the summer, a lot of clients would come to us expecting very unrealistic design of what would be possible. And then got then is from social media and design programs. I think, I think as I, I can appreciate where the question is coming from. I think clients have had unrealistic aspirations since the day architecture was created. <laughs> I think it doesn't, I don't think social media is particularly helping the issue. And I can understand that obviously people see things from social media and think, oh, you know, I want something like that. But it's the, it's always been the same people. If it wasn't social media, they'd be looking at magazines, they'd be looking at websites, they'd be looking at, you know, you know other projects that, you know, you, you might show them or their neighbour's house or something like that. I do think, obviously, social media and the world of this the 3D visualisation and people sharing projects that, you know, maybe aren't going to be built, shall we say, you know, and it's very easy when you're doing a concept project because I know I've done some 3D models and bits just for fun because why not and, and build, develop my skills. It's very easy to add all those sort of the bells and whistles because there's no budget involved. So I, I do think, like anything, it does create some element of a client thinking, oh, well, I want something like that. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's budget comes into discussion and you know, it's not, but it's that's in my mind, that's all part of being an architect. You know, they can see, they can have their own ideas that are very simple. It might not be through social media, but they might want X, Y, and Z. And if the budget doesn't work, you've got to have an honest and open discussion with them and try and work through it with them. And, and I think that's, it's always going to be a battle. It's it's never an easy discussion to have, but it, but unfortunately it is a part of architecture because I think there's that sort of, the, the way, the way that it, it works in the world. <laughs> there's that three-pronged approach, isn't there? You've got the, the quality, the time, and the cost, you know, and I'm sure everybody could put the quality and the time in, but that obviously always has a cost, and and, and it's just being open and realistic about it, really. Now, I, uh, Paul said thanks for the app, and he, start, he said, I love the phrase Insta Instagrammable architecture, and I went through some of my notes that I, I really, I really, I take once you were, while you are you were talking, and I would like to add like these things of Instagram of architecture. We used to say in the late 19th century, Sullivan said, "Okay, forms follows function." So thinking, oh, we were after the industrial revolution where the function was the main things, and then formal would follow this. But now we can say that follow forms create followers and follows so as create economy and economy create follows form so it's not something science fiction i think from my point of view because the operation of the google i mean bilbao which is in the nine, late 90s uh, was exactly what exactly these because they spent a lot of money on the Google of bilbao but they create a touristic flows so what do you think about the, the sentence economy follows forms I think it's, I think for me, it, I love the one that you said before, and I can't remember it all line, line by line, but I think I think you are right. There, there is that transition from, and, and social media does in, include that. I think, unfortunately, oh, it's a difficult one. It's a difficult one, I think, because obviously... No worries, no worries. There's no right or wrong. Economy, economy follows. Well... I think it's very. It's there's there's a there's a there's two extremes to that, isn't there? Really, I think, like you say, you have got the examples that you provided, the Guggenheims that really pushed the boat out and actually through their form create the economy and become like the examples that I I, I explained as well. The vessel and the cloud the the cloud in Chicago. I think they work in the way that actually the form creates that the you know the, the economy does follow the form. But then equally, unfortunately, as we all know as architects, the, the, the age old battle that we will have, and I'm sure we will continue to have until money doesn't become a thing anymore, is that you are always fighting the economy with the form and this certain. And, and I think it, it's, it's a bit like anything. Maybe I'm just a bit of an optimist, but I think the way that I like to look at it is 
you can always do something beautiful with the it, without the budget. You know, it doesn't. It is always. I think that's actually part of the challenge of architecture is 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 not giving in to the the sort of oh well the budget's not there so we can't do it. It's actually how can we create something beautiful from this budget and and, re, and sort of just change the thinking on it because I think you're right. I think there's so much debate about you know form follows function and all the you know the value engineering and all that kind of thing if people actually took a bit of a step back and just focused on what i believe architecture should be which is just trying to create something bespoke something beautiful something that is is made for purpose then i think there's always ways around it and there are always going to be challenge challenges for people no matter what whether it's construct you know construction budgets economy you know it's there's always going to be a challenge to overcome and that's just a part of architecture Okay, so let's let's say architect is getting wider, so we need to include other aspects now, which are <laughs> even this. So Jenny was asking about what make a post stand out against the others. Be different. It's different. different. In its in its most simple form, do something different. I think when it comes when it comes to like social media, I think if you if you can treat the work that you're doing as a piece of art as well as architecture there's always it's always going to stand out i think that you know the the detail the attention to detail and that sort of level of beauty that you can bring through treating a piece as if it was a a piece of art rather than just a a drawing that's to tick a box it, it's always going to stand out i think if you look at if I go through the, the, the posts that I've reposted, you know, that comes in so many different forms. There's no one piece of advice that I could give to somebody to say, this is how one, you, you, you know, one post is going to stand out from another. But at the same time, you've got to be different because if you follow in the trend and it just looks like something else, then people aren't going to be interested. They've seen it before. So it, it, it comes back to that last bit of it. Just follow your passion. Just do what you feel is right. Some people will resonate with it, some people won't. That's just the way life goes, unfortunately. Just then, I, I have another, like, just to, to push on, on, on a theme that you said, which is what I would like to call advanced community, aug augmented community, which is like us now, where we are joining. Uh, we are joining in the same place, gathering the same place, uh, but virtually. So, suggestion for the, for the student, uh, practitioner are the same because I get the same how to build an augmented community where to start because I think the, the main thing you said is about sharing so quick quick suggestion to build an aug augmented community uh, Instagram in a word Instagram at the moment Instagram is the quickest way to grow and communicate with so many different people should you use hashtags that you that are relevant to what you're doing uh, and that are relevant to your work so that people that be looking at those same hashtags are going to be more likely to be interested in what you've posted and talk to people like i said before just because it's through social media doesn't mean that you can't talk to people i mean i've i've been fortunate enough chris prect from prect architects formerly of pender he's got 200 odd thousand followers or something he is like architecturally one of my idols up there who i aspired to be like when i was at architecture school just sent him a message one day just said absolutely love your work i've been seeing what you've been posting he was asking sort of like a question once a week a bit of a you know what asking his followers certain things about architecture and i said i love the concept would you mind if i did something similar and he said thanks for getting in touch really appreciate you know you showing you know showing some love for the work as long as we get some you know as long as you you know mention me or whatever then i've got no problem with it and and that's the, the complete opposite end of the scale you know that's somebody that is literally i'd put on a pedestal and i can just send him a message and speak to him if you're looking to build a community just start speaking to people you know drop a you know dm now is you know love your work love this piece what software did you use or how did you do this and just start you know don't i think it's very very cautious of people just spamming other people saying oh love your work follow me no that's not what this is about this is about building sort of a community of people and saying you know and trying to actually engage in these conversations 
We have another question from Paul Bolden again. Uh, with global market currently working from home, is there any good or, or best time to post your feeds? The time of the day, I think, is one of I know, the... I know. I want it, I want it, you know, <laughs> from my heart, heart, I want to say whenever you want to, because, I mean, really, it doesn't matter. It, it, if I'm being brutally honest, if you set your Instagram, predict on Instagram, if you want to use Instagram, which is why I'm quite fond of it, Instagram will give you analytics, actually, if you set it up as a business page of, of when your followers most most likely are active and respond to your posts. So that will give you the answer from a very technical perspective, which is fine. Again, you know, any time between seven and nine o'clock of a morning and sort of four, you know, three and six o'clock of an evening, because that's when people are most likely going to, in a normal day, we check on their social media but it, it really doesn't matter because as long as you're consistent with it you know if somebody likes what you post it's more likely to come up in their feed again so as long as you're just consistent and give people more and more opportunity to like what you put up or comment on it it'll 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 grow D don't worry about it that's the other thing just just start i started a, a blog that i was just wanted to share other people's work and and now it's got 70,000 followers but the followers mean nothing really it's just something that I can say at the start of this lecture so you might listen to what I've got to say <laughs> you know what I mean? it's just something to say you know it might it's just something for people to know that I might potentially know what I'm talking about I still I'm still not fully convinced that I'm, I'm, I know what I'm doing but it's all trial and error and, and just just go with it just keep just go with it post it see what happens and you'll learn you'll, you'll learn yourself as you do it Sometimes you might get more likes than others and you'll go, okay, well, I'll post it this time next then and just see what happens. So don't worry about it. You're asking okay. the right question, to be fair, Paul. So I'd imagine whatever you do is going to be good. So Just waiting for Colin or Jenny. They are writing. I think we are going to wrap up this conference. If Let's see if you have a question. Uh, I'll take the presenter back. Let's change the slide. Uh, any other question? Is there one the at the top there? Oh, okay. On the shared notes, or is that? I missed that one. The shared notes. Yeah, all, all of our key. Do you think architecture on Instagram have been more about visuals, but when you start practicing in the real world, it's not more about map visuals and more? How could you? we use this platform to balance both. Uh, yeah, I, don't be wrong. Social media and particularly the likes of Instagram are obviously more visually orientated sources because that's just the nature of what they are. Um, and I would agree, yeah, sometimes, it, you know, when you go into an actual practice, it can be a bit of a, it's like anything. When I went to university, it was very much visual orientated and presentation pages and what have you. And then you get dropped into an architecture practice and all of a sudden you need to understand the technical aspects of a design and you need to be able to actually physically draw something that somebody can build. But it's it's just a part of the process. It's a part of learning. And, and that's what you'll pick up. I know you might not like that side of it. I know a, a Antonio last week. He, he just decided, you know what, I, the visual side of things, I'm, I'm a visual artist, that's what I want to do. I want to be the artist, and, and that's what he decided to do. And, I, and everyone's entitled to that. It, you're, you're gonna, life is all about learning different things, and just as long as you're doing what, what makes you happy and what you want to be doing, then, you know, that's that's the best way to be. I suggest it always, okay, you are... You, you will be a professional with your practice, but you have to let your client dream. Mm -hmm. So that just let be uh, in in full uh, full with your with your with his design with his house. It's not just saying oh you can do just this. Just let him dream. I think is always a good key point for any sellers. Uh, we have Mike who is asking. Um, what does the future hold for social media and architecture? Will this oh, yeah. be a trending or will be maybe a VR tape social platform take over and bring architecture into your living room in a 3D way? Is Mike, can Mike speak? Mike can speak. Can Hi. Yeah. Mike. Hi, Josh. Yeah. Great, great presentation. Um, 
I suppose I was, I'm thinking sort of 20, 30, maybe 40 years ahead. And like with a lot of things that trend, uh, they eventually sort of, there's a curve where maybe other newer things come or maybe people just get, I don't know, move on and think, well, that was a phase. What, what do you think? I mean, obviously VR is now big. Well, it's starting to get big now. Do you think eventually people will sort of start moving uh, in a different direction with social media? Do you think people will be more interactive uh, in, in, that, in that direction? That's generally the question. I, I like the way you're thinking. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think, like you say, it's like anything, a, a bit like what I mentioned at the start. If, if we're having this conversation 10 years ago and the likes of Instagram isn't about and Facebook's in its infancy, we're not even thinking about social media as a business. You know, we've got influencers and all sorts that are making millions off social media now. I think specifically in terms of architecture, I think I need to find the name of the program, but there is... There's this program on BBC or whatever it is that's using VR as a, as a tool to sort of show clients how to make decisions on, on certain certain builds. And I, I can't see any reason why VR shouldn't be taken over it. And I do think you're right. I think it might not be for a good five five to ten years maybe. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, but I think the fact that somebody could actually immerse themselves within a design that you're creating and instantly get an idea for the, the space and the way that it's going to feel, it's actually something that I'm trying to explore now. You know, I'm, I'm trying to keep ahead of the trends as best as I can. Um, is it? Yeah. That, that's... There we go. Yeah. Thanks, Chloe. It's called Your Homemade Perfect. Apparently, I've just been told. Thank you very much. That's done me a massive favour. Um, yeah. <laughs> So, and yeah, she's spot on. They use two different architects and they use VR inside people's houses to show them how the, the sort of extensions and adaptations could look sort of physically. Um, so it, it's like anything, technology is going to change. And, and again, you know, we've gone from drawing boards to AutoCAD to Revit. To, it's it's going to be a constant fluctuation. I think obviously social media might continue. It might develop. I, I think if, if the let's face it, social media and technology are way ahead of what we're doing in the world of architecture. You know, it, there's probably somebody in Silicon Valley at the moment developing some form of wearable VR glasses or whatever it is that makes VR a lot easier to interact with. Um, and that will come into the market and the front runners will be using that and the bigger practices will start with it. And then maybe in 10, 15 years time, the smaller practices will, will be able to integrate it. And I think there will just be a transition of, you know, technology and architecture. I think a lot at the moment, there's a discussion going on about AI and architecture and whether we'll all be replaced, which is a bit of a depressing thought. But I think there's always a balance with everything and, and people are always going to want that personable aspect of architecture. So, yeah, I, I, I can see VR being a massive, especially for us as architects, because at the end of the day, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to communicate our ideas in, in the best way possible so that the clients, you know, if you're a student, you know, the, the, the critiques that you're having, if, if the best way to present a project is actually let that person immerse themselves within a design and straight away they get a feel for, for how it's going to be. So I, I, I'm, I'm keeping a close eye on VR anyway. Let's put it that way. Super. Thanks. No, Thank, cheers, you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you all for for being with us today no, and to hear this lecture, you. which I think is was really really interesting and it stimulates a lot of question and it's something that is really open. Yeah. Um, so thank you again for attending this oh, virtual Wolverine University. Uh, thank all of you. Uh, from the audience attending the lecture again, stay home, stay protect the nature, save lives. And what I would like to say, be creative and keep learning. If you have any question, you can contact Josh on the Creative yeah. Student blog. Or if you have question about uh, our our architecture department, the University of Wolverhampton, you can contact me, uh, l.pintacud at wbicuk. You should have my email because you asked to send an email for the invitation. Or you can follow us on social networks. So we start creating our community with our branding, with our graphics, uh, the, the end of the last year, the beginning of this year, I would say, beginning of this year, and we push on our social. Um, we keep learning. Josh, it's not that you said, I won't, uh, I didn't imagine that I could teach uh, just three years ago. 
could teach at the university. But you know what? As lecturer, a good lecturer, first of all, is a good learner. And yeah. we keep learning for our students. We keep learning for people. We keep learning from everyone. Yeah, we even learn from architects. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We need to be open. We need to, we need to learn. From definitely. And if people Four. are on the I'm wrapping up this conference. Oh, sorry, go on. Please repeat because I think there was a problem with the internet. Yeah. No, I was just saying if, if people want to carry on the discussion or if anybody's got any questions that they didn't didn't you know particularly want to ask and on the chat or whatever or something comes up afterwards particularly anyone um specifically the, the guy that was doing his dissertation or anything like that please just message me on the blog say you've come through the lecture so i know who you are and you know these are more than happy to carry on the conversation um and just keep talking about it because it's at the end of the day it's why i started the blog in the first place and if i can help anybody then i would be more than happy to do so Thanks everyone. I'll see you from the next lecture. I don't know when we, we keep we keep doing online lectures, so we'll organize other things. Follow us on our social. Uh, we'll find us on Reba. And as I told you, we are planning to publish this through uh, a Reba website, but you will you will know on, at the right time. Thank you very much. Uh, stay home, protect nature, save lives, be creative, and keep learning. Thank you.